we have with us right now the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, talk to us about the January 6th defendants still held in custody and the Democrats' domestic war on, well, what exactly? We'll get into that. Uh, Tom, thanks for being here. Hey, good to be with you both. Thanks for having me. All right, first, you know, your group goes to get the documents, sues to find out the truth. It's one of the things that Judicial Watch does that's uh, so important for us to actually have transparency in government to find out what's really going on. What can you tell us, Tom, about the current state of the defendants who are in some cases held in solitary confinement still uh, from the January 6th so-called insurrection, the, uh, the riot on January 6th, and, and their treatment at the hands of a government that, of course, is responsive to the Biden administration in the White House? Well, the first thing people should know is that they're in a D.C. jail which is run as one might be, as one expects a D.C. jail might be run, which is awfully. It's just terrible conditions by all reports. Uh, the concerning thing is that they've, some of them have been in jail, you know, for nearly a year now, almost over a year. And uh, the question is, are they in jail because the public safety is at risk or because there's a political statement being made either by the Justice Department or the judges who have decided that this is the worst thing that's ever happened in America, crime-wise. And my concern is when you see statements they've made that are First Amendment-protected statements being used as an excuse to try to keep them in jail longer or punish them you know, beyond perhaps what the law ought to allow or, or warrant, uh, that's concerning. And on top of that, you see Congress kind of working hand-in-glove with the Justice Department in some ways, the, the Pelosi Rump Committee, you know, suggesting that anyone who had objections about the elections participated in First Amendment protected speech, certainly that rally January 6th was, uh, should be considered a terrorist or a potential criminal. And, you know, so it's not just about the January 6th defendants. The left considers any of us who object to the way the election was run to be the moral and legal equivalent in some ways of those uh, men uh, now in jail. Tom, I appreciate you coming on with us uh, and and sharing that story. Do you know the total number of uh, of these prisoners right now? We had uh, a big discussion about this with Julie Kelly, who I believe is set to testify soon uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, and she told us I think the number was eighty six, I believe, or eighty three, right around that number. And you kind of hinted at this, and this is where I look at it from the legal perspective. How many of these uh, defendants? are now in jail longer than they might be for the crimes that they are going to be or have been accused of. This is maybe the wildest part about this. They deserve bail beyond a shadow of a doubt. But when you're keeping people in a a jail for longer than they might actually go to jail if they're being found uh, to have been guilty of 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 a crime, this is beyond the pale. This is indefensible. Well, and when you compare and contrast the handling and the prosecution of these cases with the handling and prosecution of the rioters in Portland, for instance, or those yes. who tried to burn down the White House, uh, you know, this is where people are concerned about uh, the even-handed application of justice. You know, in fact, a court made that point just recently. One of the judges was pushed by one of the defendants to say, you know, to to, to consider whether or not what was happening was inappropriate in light of the what had happened in Portland in terms of the under prosecution versus what many are arguing are the over prosecution here. And the judge says, well, look, you know, you did what you did too bad. But he did say at the end of the decision, he raised questions about the even handed application of justice here. And the Justice Department uh, needs to, you know, really take a look at this. We're speaking to Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. And Tom, I uh, wanted to know, you guys have filed a lawsuit over Judicial Watch um, uh, against HHS seeking Fauci's calendar entries at the start of the pandemic. What are you th- what are you looking for there or what 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 spurred that on? No, we're just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, uh, first of all, that's a really good answer and uh, hold your <laughs> hold your powder uh, so to the whites of the eyes are visible. I appreciate that. Do you are you still stunned that we're two years in at the kid gloves treatment that much of the media continues to give Dr. Fauci and Rochelle Walensky and the other and I'm using air quotes here 
experts given how fundamentally uh, all of their uh, all of their expert advice has led to such catastrophic failure in the COVID realm that the blue check brigade, as I call them, is still running around trying to defend every word that they say. Yeah, you know, and one thing we all should see is that these agencies, these public health agencies, HHS and all the agencies that work, you know, are underneath it, FDA and uh, Fauci's agency and IH. They're just as bad as the FBI, DOJ, CIA. They're the deep state. And Fauci's been there for forever and a day. And we began asking questions to Fauci almost immediately. And Judicial Watch was criticized for suing for information under FOIA. And uh, we uncovered, as a result of that lawsuit and lawsuits we had filed, things the media hadn't uncovered, which is the gain-of-function research being confirmed, the fact that the NIAID had a person living and working in China liaison with liaising with uh, Wuhan Institute and also kind of spying on them. And then we find uh, then we had to force out the financial disclosures last week. It took a federal lawsuit and a senator to get the information out. And of course, the calendars go to to be serious. What the heck was he doing back then? Who was he meeting with? Who was he colluding with? It looks like to suppress information about the concerns about the origin of uh, the Wuhan virus. Tom, are you is, is Judicial Watch already involved in or, or is there a chance you may become involved in? Because I know you guys have a lot of lawsuits <laughs> going and a lot of issues you're trying to get more information on. But exactly what happened on January 6th from a Capitol Hill police security perspective and any orders or any decisions that were made, are you in process to try to get that information? What can you tell us about it? Let me be clear. Judicial Watch is doing the most substantial, comprehensive investigation of January 6th going on right now. Uh, and that includes investigating what Congress knew and when and those exact types of questions you're asking. And what's interesting is that Pelosi's gang is trying to put people in jail for asserting privileges, and they're coming into federal court asserting privileges against Judicial Watch to prevent as much as one second of the January 6th videos from getting out from documents about what went on then from getting out. And so uh, we've we were the ones who uncovered the uh, details about the awful shooting death of Ashley Babbitt, that 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 police officer who shot her never cooperated, never cooperated with the police. And they just let him off both the D.C. police, Justice Department and obviously Congress. And we uncovered that. the feds, for instance, knew there'd be tens of thousands of people at the Capitol on January 6th. And, of course, the security wasn't there. And we're pushing hard on who Pelosi was talking to with the administration as she was trying to undermine Trump just after the election or, excuse me, just after January 6th with Millie. You know, pretty much every question sensible citizens have about January 6th, Judicial Watch is actually trying to pursue in court. And, I, you know, I don't say that to promote Judicial Watch. I'm just saying it to highlight the fact that these this is the supposedly the worst day in American history. And it looks like we're the only ones in court trying to get basic information about what went on, not pursuing this abusive uh, agenda from the Pelosi rump committee trying to jail people uh, who um, whose only crime, it seems to be on the wrong side of the political aisle. Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch. Tom, thank you for the work you do and for joining us here on the Clay and Buck show. You're welcome. Thank you.